Families are coming forward frantically searching for the missing in Butte County this afternoon. The weather is cooperating, no longer threatening Oroville. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Kling. And I'm Curtis Bing. Let's get straight to CBS 13's Renee Santos live with the latest on the search. Renee? Yeah, families are desperate to find their loved ones. That fire leaving so many people trapped. The devastation overwhelming for many, including one woman whose sister's Berry Creek home is gone. Much of the town does look like this. Burnt trees, homes destroyed. She desperately wants to know if her sister is okay and is hopeful she is alive. Now, homes, cars, properties all throughout Berry Creek burnt to pieces. I just spoke to Michelle Rancor Aldridge, whose sister Kelly is missing. Kelly is one of at least 12 people families are searching for. Michelle says her sister just has a home phone and that got burned along with her home in the fire. She says neighbors did see Kelly leave as the fire raged through town, but no one has heard from her since then. Michelle just wants to know that she is safe. That I love her and I'm glad she's not in the house. Yeah, it's scary. We're talking about a public health crisis in terms of clean air, the potential or not for clean water. Uh, so there, this, is a, this has a profound public health consequence. Uh, you to look at seniors, you look at children who cannot throughout California right now because of the smoke, leave their homes. They cannot go outdoors or they're, they're advised not to go outdoors because it is a health risk to them. This is a public health crisis, the climate crisis. Let's talk about it on the issue of, of, of systemic racism. In America today, in of all of the poor air quality zones of America, 70% of the people who live in those areas are people of color. So when we talk about environmental justice, we know that people of color, poor people, are disproportionately impacted by these issues. So there is that. Let's talk about the economy. So when we look at what we can do, what was what is within our grasp to address this, to invest in solar panels, wind turbines, to invest in infrastructure that allows us to mitigate against predictable damage. That's also about the creation of jobs. And by the way, a failure to do it is about the loss of jobs. Let's talk to anybody who lives in this community who runs a small business or a grocery store or a gas station, and they will tell you how this has had a profound impact on the economic vitality of these communities that have been plagued by these wildfires over the years. So these issues are all connected. Senator, if I can turn to COVID for a second, you are now out on the trail. Um, former Vice President Biden is out on the trail. Um, meeting voters where they are, but, you know, God forbid, if one of you two contract COVID, I know that you guys are getting regularly tested now, what is the established plan if one of you contract COVID between now and the election? The plan is not to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Thank you, Paul. Period. Any more? <laughs> Senator Harris. Thank you very much, guys. We're going to go stage in the parking lot for departure. Thank you. So we have a quick reaction to Trump saying Thank that you. Not playing into climate change. Okay, guys, we're going to move over to the parking lot. Thank you. We're going to hold here. Okay, cool. We're going to head back to the bus now. I think we got the shot. Thank you. This isn't just devastation. This is our lives. Governor Gavin Newsom and Senator Kamala Harris tweeted out photos Tuesday showing their visit to a home destroyed by the Creek Fire. The Patton family saw the photos and realized that's their house, or what's left of it. When we saw those photos, it was, I, you, I mean, there aren't words because it's like we haven't even seen our house. We haven't even seen our property. Well, there is no house. We haven't even seen our property. The family is accusing Governor Newsom and Senator Harris of using their pain as a political tool and a photo opportunity. This is where we grew up. These are our memories. And to, to not have that, to feel so helpless... And, and I guess that's kind of what we've all been thinking is that we are so helpless because we weren't there. We haven't got to deal with our loss. Instead, we're having to play, have it played out 
on social media and news. So these are the stories behind these fires. And the people who are who are victimized by these, you know, they could care less and their children could care less who they voted for in the last election. We're not victims, we're survivors. We're gonna get through this, but the whole community has lost. And to just take a picture of one, of one loss, it's not enough. When I asked Senator Harris's communication director for a statement, he told me, I'm not going to have anything about that. 